Fairy stories and mythology frequently feature giants, but in actuality, giants made of flesh and blood are not uncommon. Swan Bates, a fearless heroine who will always be remembered as the world's tallest woman, daringly enters the narrative. Tragically, her life ended prematurely due to suffering. A duo that halted passers-by in their tracks was Anna and Martin Bates. They both toured together as curiosities despite having a genetic condition known as gigantism and standing over seven feet tall. However, despite the fact that their love tale enthralled their listeners, it also brought them to a tragic conclusion. Welcome back to History Rediscovered. In this episode, we discuss history's most tragic giant woman to ever exist. On August 6th, 1846, Anna Haining Bates was born in Nova Scotia. Her parents were immigrants from Scotland named Alexander Swan and Anne Graham. Being the third of 13 average-sized children, Anna came from a fairly large family. Naturally, Anna was not one to fit in with the others. According to some accounts, Anna may have been an average-sized baby herself, but according to other accounts, she weighed 13 pounds from birth. They all agreed that she was over four feet tall and weighed over 90 pounds by the time she was four years old. She was seven feet tall when she turned 15, but her growth spurt didn't stop there. It was eventually discovered that Anna Bates was born with gigantism, a condition caused by an excess of growth hormones released by a tumor in the pituitary gland, despite the fact that the condition was never formally recognized. Gigantism causes a person to develop extremely quickly and usually has a much shorter lifespan. Despite the difficult hand that fate had dealt Anna, an exciting life was ahead of her. The family of Anna Bates was quite understanding of their daughter's unusual situation. It's said that her father made a bigger desk by hand, specifically for her when she outgrew the one from elementary school. Not only that, but he made her an extra large bed so that, in spite of her evident differences, she remained as comfortable as everyone else in the house. Sadly though, he was powerless to shield her from the outer world. Anna turned into a spectacle for everyone. People in Nova Scotia started flocking to her family's farm in the hopes of seeing Anna as word of this small, large girl spread. The curiosity in her grew even more when articles about her started to appear in local newspapers. She was even called an infant giantess in one newspaper. Anna's family saw this as a significant opportunity as she was always a unique curiosity. Anna's family was in need of some money. They had little trouble assigning their other kids to labor because they were farmers and their exuberant daughter was no different. Anna continued to grow, therefore she often needed new expensive clothes and shoes. The family decided to put Anna to work by having her travel around local fairs as an attraction in order to help raise additional money. It should come as no surprise that there is some dispute concerning Anna's early touring career. Although it was understandable that her family needed the money, some claimed that her loved ones were taking advantage of her by showing her off. However, the majority of historians concur that her family remained truly concerned and made sure she was secure at all times by going with her on these tours and picking places that were more meant to pique people's attention than anything else. Anna wasn't always a tour guide, though. She used to take care of her younger siblings a lot, while also trying to read and concentrate on other artistic pursuits. She so tried her best to continue doing all of the regular activities that other kids did, even though her experience was undoubtedly unique. She also had a very typical dream, but regrettably it was doomed from the start. Anna's dream was to become a teacher, but she ran into additional challenges while trying to complete her degree in a new city while living with her aunt. Because of her stature, Anna felt that the classes were physically confining, and she was especially uncomfortable in this new town because people on the streets stared at her a lot. Her dreams of becoming a teacher were dashed by this therapy, but happily, bigger things were on the horizon for her. Anna's grandma used to give her advice on how to handle her size. Stand tall and be proud of your Highland ancestry. This helped keep her emotions stable and her self-worth in control. Anna strived to carve out a new position for herself in the world, and it seemed that this helped her deal with the fact that she was different from most people. She really reached high. Because of her height, 
Anna was able to pursue her employment and schooling at the same time when she moved to America in 1862 to work as the Nova Scotian giantess at the P.T. Barnum Museum. She received tutoring there and picked up singing and piano skills. She was presented with incredible chances by the museum, many of which were unheard of at the time. Anna got paid $23 a week in gold, which is currently $500. Incredibly, she was also granted a chaperone and given the opportunity to make additional money from the sale of images bearing her likeness, as long as her contract permitted her to retain the rights to those photos. Her family was relieved because they had been worried about her joining the Barnum Museum because they would no longer be around to support her and participate in her exhibitions. While working at the museum, Anna portrayed personas such as Lady M, C. B. Beth, and engaged audiences in question and answer sessions to share her experiences as one of the world's tallest women. For the most part, the experience was beneficial to her since it allowed her to take charge of her own story rather than just being a freak show and taught others about her life. Her initial passion for teaching was thus fulfilled in an unexpected way. Sadly, though, these enjoyable moments at Barnum Museum would not last long. At Barnum's museum in 1865, Anna was caught up in a terrifying fire. There were flames shooting up the stairs, and Anna, who weighed about 400 pounds at the time, could not have fit through a window in any case. Even though she was helped by 18 people who carried her, Anna was left with nothing. Therefore, the effects of the fire were still devastating. Anna lost everything, everything she owned burned up in the fire. Curiously, historians sometimes ignore the fact that despite being one of the last to flee and unable to stop anything from burning, Anna was a tremendous hero who saved many people from certain death. Get away before her, which also made her remain back and lose so much in any case. She had a deep-seated desire to help Jean. By all accounts, Anna Bates was wise and kind, despite the price. While on tour, she made friends with people who were physically different from her, too, and they grew close to her. Actually, she was able to make friends with one of the most well-known royals of the day, thanks to her captivating charm. Because of her size, Anna was no stranger to travel. She made rounds across Europe and the United States, returning only sometimes to her birthplace in Nova Scotia in 1863. While on tour, she even became friends with Queen Victoria. As a draw in Europe, and despite the fact that the two didn't seem like your typical lady, they ended up becoming very different friends. Anna drew a lot of attention from suitors. Reports stated that she was approached with many proposals, but because of her performing career, she declined such offers. She found it very challenging to tell who was sincere, as opposed to when they were only interested in taking advantage of her money. But she later met a man who gave her hope for true love. While, while visiting a Halifax circus, Anna couldn't help but notice Martin Vannon Bates, a man who was also over seven feet tall and weighing in at 500 pounds. It really is a story as ancient as every prince needs his princess and every giant needs her giant. Naturally, Martin and a publicist noticed Anna straight back, which led to some unexpected changes in both her work and her love life. After falling deeply in love and starting their nearly 150-year journey together as a circus act, Anna wed Martin in London in 1871. As the tallest married couple ever, Anna and Martin continue to hold the title in the Guinness Book of World Records. With a combined height of almost 477 centimeters, or 15 feet 8 inches, they surpassed the tallest married pair, alive by more than nearly 2 feet. Anna Bates is linked to multiple Guinness Book of World Records. We'll talk about the other one in a moment, but it was through this actual union that Anna Bates officially changed her last name from Swan to Bates. During this transformation, she was bestowed 
with a great blessing and was also mentioned at some point during her travels. In 1861, Bates became friends with Queen Victoria. Despite going through a deep sadness and intense grieving for the remainder of her life after losing her spouse, Prince Albert, the Queen's own grief did not lessen her admiration for other people's love tales. When rumours about Anab Bass's romantic awakening began to circulate in 1871, Queen Victoria made the decision to treat her particularly. The entertainer received more presents from her than just a bridal gown composed of 50 matters of lace and 100 matters of satin embroidered with orange blossoms. There is a rumour that Queen Victoria set up the St. Martin in the Fields Church for the Bates wedding. The story of the two women's unexpected friendship is still an intriguing bit of legend, even though it's unclear if it is entirely accurate. Leaving speculation aside, there were certainly still a few more gifts from the Queen Anna in store for the Bates. Queen Victoria invited Bass back to Buckingham Palace, where he accepted the offer and was given a diamond cluster ring. Along with the chain, the bridegroom also received a gold watch. Later on, the pair had at least two additional meetings with the Queen and encountered a few other royals. A year after getting married, Bates and her new husband bought a large house near Seville, Ohio, with lots of property and special height requirements to fit their enormous statures. Huge ceilings and specially large entrances could be found in the main part of the house. Though things weren't always easy going, the couple made the decision to make the back of the house a moderate size to accommodate both servants and guests. Occasionally, the couple encountered the incorrect promoters while on tour with several companies. They were even thrown out of a train car on one occasion. Little information is available on why they were so unwelcome with certain promoters, but Bate appeared to bounce back from these setbacks. She had no trouble finding love elsewhere after all. Anna Bates was an animal lover now, very much so. Although she didn't like horse racing, she made it a point to take cattle and draft horses on the farm with her husband Martin. She also adopted animals that had retired from the circus. Her relatives still tell stories about a specific occasion in which she took in Buttons, a monkey that was notorious for making trouble with guests in 1872. Despite this, Bates and her husband were still a newlywed couple when they welcomed their first child together. But it ended in tragedy on May 19, 1872. A baby girl was born weighing 18 pounds. Sadly, though the girl did not survive childbirth, for Anna Bates, the loss was incredible and unfortunately, similar ones would strike her later in life, six years after the birth of her stillborn Bates became pregnant with a son in 1878. On January 18, 1879, her water broke and she reportedly lost six gallons of fluid, but she was in for an extremely rough labor. As the hours passed and the baby was crowned, the doctor came to a chilling realization. Abbe's baby was so big the doctor couldn't fit his forceps around its head, and to usher the child into the world, they placed a bandage around its neck and pulled. He was a whopping 23 pounds, and Martin later wrote, he looked at birth. This infant boy, who had only been born six months ago, was allegedly 30 inches, 75 centimeters long. While Anna's height is unknown, estimations place her at 71 inches, or 241 centimeters, tall while her husband Martin was taller at 7 feet 9 inches, or 236 centimeters. Sadly, this was another misfortune delivery. Anna Bates brutally lost her motherhood just 11 hours after her baby child died. He was the largest infant ever documented and as such, he was awarded a Guinness World Record posthumously. Bates was severely damaged by this second loss she suffered, and the effects had a lasting impact on her. Having lost two children, Bat fell into a deep depression. She no longer wanted to be on tour and withdrew socially to cope with her pain in many ways. This was the beginning of the end, although she attempted returning with the circus again a bit later on, 
she ultimately withdrew once again after returning with the circus. Bates and her husband decided to live a quieter existence in the late 1870s. By the spring of 1880, in fact, Bates and Martin had become quite active with the Baptist Church, attending services and regularly reading the Bible, and she was spending much of her time on the farm they owned. After battling thyroid problems and tuberculosis, Anna's childhood dream of becoming a teacher was miraculously realized in 1888, when she started teaching Sunday school at the Baptist Church. In fact, their church had special seats installed so the couple would be comfortable while attending. Heart failure struck Anna while she slept. Because of this, she tragically never woke up to witness the passing of another year, Bates's husband, who passed away just one day before her 42nd birthday. To honor her, Martin had a monument built on her grave. A year later, he got remarried and left their house in Ohio to make room for his second wife, who was ordinary in size, on the other hand, Martin was buried next to Anna Bates and his infant son when he committed suicide. Seville, Ohio, still remembers Bates and her husband living there. A display featuring mementos from their lives is devoted to the pair. Halifax is home to a museum as well. Devoted entirely to the Giantis and some of her ancestors' descendants, continue to curate and lead tourist tours with a brief but fascinating history of her life. Bates was frequently shown and advertised as being more than eight feet tall, but in reality, she stopped growing before becoming that big. Reports on her true height do differ though, in an effort to emphasize the appeal that highlights the exaggeration. Of her stature, frequently became essential and persisted in newspapers, even after inaccurate records from the British Library revealed posters from the day Bates was traveling. Bits' placement as headliners above Chang and Ang, the Siamese twins of origin, who were huge stars in London at the time, serves as a reminder that she drew crowds as big as she was. She was billed as the largest woman in the world and was advertised as such. Well, that's all for now. Do you believe Anna had a flawless life? Tell us in the space provided for comments below. Please remember to subscribe and support.